okay now we are moving towards the third flavor in the black box testing that is system testing the definition says it is an end to end testing done by the test engineers in testing server which is similar to the production server testing server which is similar to the production server means production server basically it is uh, it is situated in the customer place so that is why it is called as production server testing server belongs to the testing team which they will install the application and they will test thoroughly over there so as the definition says uh, it is an end to end testing done by the test engineer so from top to bottom like from first to last uh, we are testing that application that's why it is called as end to end testing note end to end testing is a part of system testing if you do end to end testing in testing server similar to the production server then we can tell both are same if uh, for example uh, why they say like that means for example uh, we are doing in a for example we are doing in a windows and uh, the customer was using a macbook over there see we can't use that uh, software in windows and we can't deploy it to the ios we need to check uh, check the ios also so that's why it is called as similar server if you can't do the uh, the testing in a similar server means it going to be relate uh, some issues over there in the customer place that's why the same server what they are using in the production server that's the same thing we are doing for the testing itself because it is work properly in the both the server that's why so end to end testing means navigating through all the future and check whether e uh, whether end futures or last future is working as expected or not it is called as end to end testing uh if you've got any examples means i am going to explain after this uh, definition words uh, then you will get to know what is an end to end testing so for example see first for the module a we need to do functional testing after that for module b functional testing and integration testing why we are not uh, doing integration testing means integration testing as i said it is a like uh we will check uh, with the, between the two uh, like uh, two phases or uh, two persons or two uh, data is transferred or not so that's why we can't do integration testing in one model we need another one model to check the integration testing see after building two models we are doing functional testing and integration testing in the same way for doing the system testing we need last lots of module because it is it is an end to end testing see after creating like 1 2 3 4 5 modules we we can do system testing after creating three modules also we can do system testing so see it is an last end feature end to end feature first we are doing functional testing after that integration here we can do system testing system testing system testing for this e feature we are doing functional testing integration testing and as well as system testing so that is what basically we will do in system testing while doing end to end testing we are not worried about functional testing and integration testing because before we started doing system testing already we will do with the functional and integration after doing functional and integration only we are moving towards the system testing see this is the order what the company will going to follow see customer give the requirements for the software company software company will pick, uh, pick some sdlc model and the developers will write the code and do the white box testing software given to the after developing software will given to the test engineer test engineer will do, do black box testing what i'm explaining right now in that black box testing first they will do functional testing after that they will do integration testing after that they will do system testing so this is the workflow they will go after system testing some of the testing will going to be joint uh, like this only so i'm explaining in upcoming classes so next is what is server so some of them or not get to know what is server uh, what is development server how many types of server are there for that uh, that sake uh, i added extra future for the my presentation so server server is a combination of hardware and software we can't uh, tell the server is only a software server is the combination of hardware and as well as software so there are a lot of type over there in the server so first one we are going with the development server or environmental 
Development server is a combination of hardware and our software, which is mainly used to store the code written by the developer. So development software is mainly used to the used to store the code written by the developer. Testing server. Testing server is a combination of hardware and software. Same thing, which is mainly used to install the build or software, which is need to be tested. As I explained to you earlier days, the one server will be there. So developer and test engineer both can install the developer software into the server and test engineer will do the server testing to testing by logging into the testing server. So this is the same thing testing server. See developer will write uh, will write uh, will store use that server to store the code. Here test engineer will use this testing server to test the software. That's it. The next one is production server. Production server same as combination of hardware and software, which is present in the customer place. Production server is mainly present in the customer place, wherein customer will use the software and run the business. For example, if we go to the D Mart or more, they will use them scan scan the barcode and they will print the bill. That is also a software. We can uh, take that as an example. The next one is what is cloud? Cloud is also a server. Which is not managed physically by the customer. Uh, that's why it is called as cloud server. It is not physically uh, managed by the customer. As the development server, as the uh, as the testing server, the cloud is not uh, not a, uh, not managed by physically by the customer. But it is a server. So next is uh, when to go for system testing. So when minimum bunch of modules are present, as I told you, one module and two module, we can't do the system testing. System testing is an end to end testing. So when minimum bunches of modules are ready, then we will go for system testing. So next one is basic functionality of all the modules should be working fine. Basic functionality means functional testing and integration testing. If both are working fine, then only we will move on to the system testing. Then production server should be relatively stable. Yes, sir. Uh, keep your mouse moving wherever you you are explaining. Wherever yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is. Yes, sir. Sorry, I forgot that one. See, product or software should be relatively stable. That means the product should work fluently. There will be no blockers. For example, if we take login page, if you are clicking on the login page on the, for example, email text field. If the email testing field is not working, means it is a blocker defect. We can't move further action for that one, right? That is what the product or software should be relatively stable. There will be no blocker defects. Then we will move on to the system testing. Testing server similar to the production server setup should be available. See, testing server in testing server we are doing the testing. Then production server, which is also be set up, will be present. That means the production set. Uh, for example, if I take my laptop, my laptop is Core i5 seventh generation, and uh, it contains some NVIDIA graphic card and it contains one GB like RAM ROM like that. The same exact thing or more than that should be present in the customer field also, because we are not doing the testing for a lot of servers. We we, we will do, but uh, this is the earlier stage, so I'm explaining some little bit amount of what we are doing right now and how the procedure will follow. That's it. If we are doing, for example, uh, take like this, if we are doing in core i5 7 generation means production server should be uh, set up at the same thing. That's it. Or you can uh, generate it more also, but we need to do the testing for that also. So uh, when we start getting the less number of requirement, then only we will go for system testing. If the requirement is coming, we are building over there and we are doing the system testing means it is highly impossible. So when we are getting the less number of requirement, then only we will go for system testing. So next one is, this is the best example how the company will work, how we will develop the software uh, and how we are maintaining everything is completing in this one diagram so sir shall i zoom this part i zoom and show that specific parts yes zoom and show the specific part okay okay let me take the customer as citibank or you can take gts also anything so let me take the company name as gts so customer name is citibank okay for example 
uh, customer like Citibank give the requirement A to Z requirement for the GTS company. So company what we will do to complete that project, they will follow one SDLC model. So see here everything as given by the customer means we are not going to follow waterfall model. We can follow. See everything has been done and no requirement changes is not going on. So we can follow the waterfall model over here. See they are not changing any requirement. They gave A to Z complete requirement. So it's an easy model. We can follow that one. After that BA from the company will travel to the customer place or customer will come to the place that is uh, that is the secondary. The BA will convert all the requirement document from CRS to SRS and they give and they will give to the developer. So before giving to the developer, there are a lot of steps like feasibility study will be done by the team and after that designing will be done to the team. After that, by designing high level design and low level design, after that they will give the design to the developer to develop the software. So what he will do, not only a single developer when involved in the developing the project. So they will do, uh, they will like, for example, they will give the sign up to assign to the developer one, they will give another future to the developer two, they will give another future to the developer three, developer four, developer three, developer six. So like that, there are hundreds of developers. So what they will do, they will develop each and every individual function and they will deploy to the development server. Suppose let me take development server as Rex server. So they will develop that, deploy that developer uh, like software into the one server where we can see each and every developer can see that one. See here, for example, we, we need to store that build in like this format D so, uh, like uh, ash, uh, then uh, sorry, uh, D then uh, double slash build slash B01 dot zip file as software build A. See, we are mentioning build A, build B, build C, and we are linking that build A is uh, linked to build, uh, build B and link A, uh, here build A is linked to build B here build B is linked to build C like that see we are deploying each and every developers will deploy into the development server why they are doing that means uh, not uh, 100 members are not is situated at the one place so some of them are doing developing from America some of them are developing from Karnataka like that so they will use that development server uh, development this server as a like center for the development. Uh, let me take it as some office like that for the development. It is like a server. So after development, uh, after developer develop the server, then developer will send a mail. This is how it actually works. We won't call for the email. Ah, tester, now the project is ready. You can test. No, the, we won't do that. Once after the development server development is done, then we, the developer will send a mail to the mailed to the test lead stating that uh, like build uh, is ready to test then test lead will log into the development server and they will get that build and they will distribute among the test engineers as the developer there are a lot of test engineers we are working from different state different countries so they are going to give test lead will going to uh, give the test engineers who are all present here to test the software. See one build, like one build, function, first name, last name, username. So this features as given to the test engineer one. See for test engineer queue, they are doing password, then contact address. Like that, they are going to distribute all the fields among the test engineers. So what they will do, they can't get the future means test lead can't distribute the future individually by sending for one 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 for test engineers email. So what he will do, he will deploy all those things into the testing server. So what they will do is after deploying that one, he will unzip the file and he will install the build to the testing server. So see as the development server here also testing server will be there. So what they will do test engineer one, what they are assigned now. They will fetch that one and they will start do the testing. Okay. The same exact thing for test engineer two, test engineer three, test engineer four by logging into the testing server, they do the testing testing. So if for example, first test cycle, 
what we are doing like sprint for example like that first test cycle see let me take it as five days so another two days is weekend that is holiday so first take it as five days they will do functional testing for, for example let me take for module a they will find 100 defect over there what they will do they will communicate it to the development lead who will communicate either test engineer can communicate directly if they get access or their test engineer will going to communicate to the test lead then test lead will communicate to the development lead after that development lead will assign that defect to that development uh, engineers like who the part means who developed that software okay like that if they found defect they will follow that one see they will view the defect if they get time now nah, they will fix the 60 defects and they will do the testing for that if they won't get now nah, they will go into the next future the same thing for the 25th test cycle they are doing the same thing after 26th test cycle for example here we are doing for the build a for example here we will build uh, take the for a to q see for a to q they will do system testing for that after that suppose that uh, let me go for 56th cycle because it will be uh, really confusion so 50th cycle for example they find 1000 defects in that 1000 defects they are going to complete 600 defect so remaining 400 defect they will carry over to the last sprint and uh, remember that this 400 defects is not a blocker or critical or major defects some of them are major but it's not the 400 should be a minor defect otherwise it is going to be complicated in 50, 55th cycle so what they will do in 55th cycle that is a loss cycle they will stop the requirement means they will freeze the requirement from the customers and they will do functional integration system testing for a to z module and they were going to clear entire defects so after clearing the entire defects in testing server they will deploy that to the production server in the customer place see testing server support it is cpu1 cpu2 so suppose it gets 2000 cpus 20000 and 50000 tb of hardware and 200 gb of rom OS is Linux. So same exact thing should be present in the testing server, which is similar to the production server. Then they will, then the setup will be done. Then the production server, then the software will workflow in testing server. Na. Exactly the same thing will deploy to the production server and the, and see same thing is, uh, same features has been there for the testing server and production server means exactly the same software is deploying means the software will be working fine right this is the exact process what we are following in the day-to-day -day life for the development and the installation in the server in the company uh, guys are you getting my point or should i explain in easy way or you got any doubts got it So, so th this is all about how they will work. The next one is then how to do system testing. If we have to explain a real time example and system scenarios, if someone asks in the interview, this is the interview question. If someone asks, ask the what is system testing means, we can't tell the definition. So you can either explain what I explained in the previous like this one or you need to explain anything in a simple way. Okay. So when it comes to next one, why do we need to do system testing to make sure that all end to end scenarios are working properly? We should do system testing. So alter name of system testing is also called as end to end testing. So when to go for system testing, uh, as I said, a requirement, as I said in the previous stage, see up to here, the exact thing followed for, for integration testing. See for the functional testing, this should be done for integration testing. This, this much should be done for system testing. Three points will be added. Minimum bunches of models should be ready. Product should be relatively stable. There will be no blocker defect. Basic functionality of all the modules should be working fine. 
then software should be installed in the testing server similar to the production server then when we are start getting less number of requirement then we will do system testing then system scenarios and test cases should be present see for doing each and every functionalities we need to get the scenarios and as well as test cases we will do that testing and will do that so this is all about system testing if you got any doubts you can ask me then the performance testing will take another 10 minutes that's it is there any doubts related to system testing no jeevan got it your points so next one is performance testing it is comes under non functionality testing uh, here we will check whether the performance is working fine or not it is a simple concept uh, definitions as a definition uh, states testing the stability and response time of an application by applying load it is called as performance testing if you want to remember this definition or if you want to remember the performance testing in easy way means it's a simple take facebook as an example and in the same uh, for the login page if thousand people are logging at the same time all over karnataka some thousand people are logging at the same time if they enter the gmail and exactly the same time thousand members are going to kick the login button so for each and every person the login page should be appear in one or two seconds now they are appearing in one or two second right so that is what the performance testing is done for the entire future okay it is all it is also called as baseline detection this is all the alternate names baseline bottleneck benchmark testing spring testing spike testing threshold breakpoint so these are the alternate names and uh, uh, let me take uh, uh, definitions uh, in the definition something like load what do you mean by load it is nothing but designing number of users as i said 1000 number of user for example load will be specified by customer manager lead senior developer or senior test engineer they will specify the load okay see the exact same thing has been done for gmail for example 10000 user wants to log in for the page so for the 10000 user exactly in the same in the same times home page should be displayed if they got the proper internet connection so internet connection is doesn't matter we are checking for the software is working properly or not so next one is stability what is mean by stability it is an ability to withstand the load means number of user which is applied on the application or software okay uh, then what is response time it is nothing but time taken to send the request to the server and time taken to run the corresponding program in the server and time taken to get the response from the server that's it so we are sending the request uh, that way we are calculating the time and we are uh, uh, whether the program is running how many times it going to take we are calculating that one also and we are getting back the request or not we are getting that calculation of that also by combining the t how many times it takes to response that we are going to calculate in response time that's it then there are uh, like uh, one two three four five types of uh, performance testing that is load stress stability scalability volume then so exactly up to here the definition is same for everything see uh, testing the stability and response time of an application by applying the load exactly same thing for each and every types so after this it is going to be changed like which is lesser than or equal to defined number of user that's what we are do doing in load testing see testing the stability and response time of an application by applying the load which is lesser than or equal to design number of loads for example the load is 5000 that we need to get the response in 10 seconds see we are giving the 3000 loads instead of 5000 if it is taking 5 at uh, 12 means uh, 12 seconds for example mm, that is defect see for 5000 it is taking 8 seconds for 4000 it is taking 9 seconds for 4500 it is taking 6 seconds so for taking 3000 it should be lesser than this one right but it is taking 12 seconds means it is defect so exactly what we will do is we will communicate to the developer developer will develop the new software and they will give the same thing process will go so this is what about load testing when it comes to stress, what is mean by stress? As you all know that we'll sustain with the last of stress. Exactly the same thing. Uh, see, testing the stability and response time of an application by applying load. Exactly the same thing, the, the definition, which is greater than the desired number of user. See, we are putting the stress 
to do more work for example load is 6000 we are giving it for 7000 means it then we are checking it for stress see the capacity is 6000 but we are loading it 7000 they will do but it they uh, but it will do in a stress that's what we are doing in a stress then scalability scalability means what same exact thing for up to here which is greater than design number of user and check for the breakpoint see here we are checking for the breakpoint by applying more load okay see for example load is 5000 response time is 10 seconds 5000 it will take 8 uh, 8 uh, for 7000 it takes 10 seconds and blank page will appear means it is not working so that is the breakpoint up to here it is working properly and fine see the load is only 5000 but we are implementing 5500 also it is working 6000 also it is working up when it go for 7000 that is its break point then the black page will come it is not work it won't work that is what we will check our at, at which stage the break point will going to be occur then uh, next one is volume testing see exactly the same thing but here what we will do we will transfer huge volume of data into the database is called as volume testing see the mainly done in testing the capacity of the database what we will do for the database we will transfer huge amount of data whether it can store or not and we will check that that's it then soap testing or endurance testing what we will do testing the separate and response time of an application by applying the load continuously for a particular period of time or a special period of time is called as soap testing for example uh, if you are uh, continuously clicking on login for like uh, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 times and we will check the breakpoint or we will check for the particular period whether it is working properly or not. Uh, if login page uh, for 10,000 it is working fine. For 11,000 it is not login button is only not working means so it's going to be defect. That's why we will do soap testing for that one for kicking 100,000 times also it should be working fine that's what we are doing right now see it's a simple way we can um, uh, remember the definition like right? big loads testing test scalability volume testing and so in a diff, uh, in a similar yeah. way so here we are giving yeah. the lesser than or equal to node which is greater than and greater than and checking for the okay. break point for volume testing huge volume of data volume for soak we are using for the particular period of time that's it so yeah so how to do performance testing uh, in real time application for example i am going to take as a jmeter jmeter we will use to do the performance testing and it is a licensed version 30 lakhs users or uh, uh, 30 lakhs users is the limit for that one so suppose i will take the jmeter how it is going to convert that one see First, 1 lakh user should open browser and enter URL www.gmail.com and click on the login page. Login page should be open at 10 seconds. 1 lakh user, it can be possible. We can tell 1 lakh user at a time. For example, 100 lakh. So for checking that one, we can't uh, like we can't appoint it 100 lakh people, right? It means 100,000 people at one step by giving him them a them the salary and uh, all. So we will use uh, the JMeter for that. First, what we will do, we will click on the start recording button. Okay. After that, we are going to enter URL www.gmail.com and um, we are going to assign how many people need to be logged in for that one. See, for example, I am taking 1 lakh. For example, 5 lakh I want. Then what I will do, after clicking the 5 lakh, I will enter the start time and I will enter the stop time. We can enter or automatically it will get generated. For that one, what we will need to do is we will create the number of users for that one and we will stop recording and we will click on the run button. What the JMeter will do for the 5 lakh people, they will get into that login page www.gmail.com and click on that login page whether the login page is displayed in 10 seconds or not. What they will do for, we are mentioned 10 seconds, right? For JMeter, they will going to mention how much time it is going to take on to access for the 5 lakh people. See, the starting time will be mentioned and as well as stopping time will be mentioned by the JMeters. So that is how the JMeter work. They will create 5 lakh dummy people and they will do the login page work. 
similar way we can do for anything login page username like that so next one is i think that's it ah when to go for performance testing am to functional testing it's is same see functional testing smoke functional uh, integration system or doc should be done after the only we will go for performance uh, testing for performance testing of course scenarios and test cases should be ready this is all about system and performance testing guys this is a theory part you will get bored over here uh, but uh, unfortunately we are using the exact thing to do api testing also for any automation testing we are exactly following the same testing so we need to learn this this is all about system testing and as well as performance testing if you got any doubt you can ask me yeah wonderful very good very good thank you sir yeah so guys uh, while theoreticals are very important so that you can speak until you have uh, you know words in your mind talk to right even if you know you know to do practically and you are not able to explain during the interview or real time sessions then uh, i mean it will not be valued basically so to value what you have learned you have to speak out and to speak out you need to go through the theory so uh, the hard work whatever you know jivan is been doing so that is wonderful and uh, very nice uh, you know jivan keep that up and Thank i am expecting others also to do in that way so if you uh, theoreticals and practicals go hand by hand okay theoreticals will tell you how to express your knowledge right and also when someone else is demonstrating you will understand only when you know that meaning of those words you know those terminologies and concepts right and then once you know the terminologies concepts and when you do the real time practice that will help you to do the practicals faster okay so um, uh, yeah keep that in mind and uh, do uh, as best you can okay big hands again guys i think uh, some people have left already but uh, uh, they will watch the recording yeah then all right so okay. we'll, uh, thank you sir at 12 o'clock again uh, yes, sir, sir uh, java design pattern i got but i'm going to explain that one in uh, christina section because yeah. some of them are want to do the lunch also right now so they yeah, have yeah. to do. i mean let's have uh, give some uh, space between the yes. demos so that you know uh, people will have time to grab it okay that's fine you can plan it on monday thank you sir yeah, yeah. okay sir so thank you so when will i be team again